Hey, what did you already welcome back to the channel? Hope you're just having a great day. So we're gonna be going over a couple things in this video. So first up on the list, we're gonna be talking about ranching. I love doing it. I wish I could do it full time, but I'm nowhere near a big enough operation for it to like actually sustain my family. And at the moment, I'd say we're kicking it right at the line of expensive hobby. I love doing it and hopefully it's able to turn into like a profitable venture one day. But for right now, it's just something that we really enjoy doing. But it's not always butterflies and rainbows. There is the occasional currents. I've been trying to figure out how to word this correctly, but pretty much it just sucks. And we had a couple of those instances happen over the past couple of weeks. We've had a couple storms roll through here. And just to kind of give you like a brief description, we've had this one oak tree on the property that's realistically been dead for probably about three years. And I've just been scratching my head at how to get rid of this thing because it had such a far lean on it. And we had one of our pipe corrals running underneath it that I just thought there was so much room for error. And in this last storm that we had a split fully developed all the way through the trunk. So we had to act fast and push this thing over. So we are gonna be addressing that in today's video and I currently do not have a whole lot of time to dilly dally because as we speak, my cows are currently on my neighbor's property. They pushed through his fence, they found the weak point. So I gotta run over there, help prepare it. And as always, there may be something else that makes us win this video, but I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump on into it and let's roll. I came from the mud, there's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law Hope they won't shoot me down soon They seem gone to sleep this night Try to catch me howling one of those things that I wish I did not have to do right now. Kind of hoping I had more time to do this, but we got this oak tree right here. Got very saturated, got a little bit windy, and we just saw that the trunk split in half and it is about to fall over onto this bullpen, which if that happens, it's just gonna demolish it. So not 100% sure how I'm gonna do this right now, but I gotta fire up the excavator and I gotta push this thing over or it's gonna destroy this. Oh. Let's get these cows out of here. Come on. Yeah. Out. Out. Push, push, push. I could not have gone any better. Oh, that scared me. Dang. Look at all that mold in there. Got my angles pretty good. We just had some slight brush ups right there, but it didn't damage anything. So now this is a huge relief because this is something that I've been wanting to do for the past couple months because I've known that this tree was just super rotten and about to break. So kind of relieved that it went as smooth as it did and we didn't damage anything, didn't break anything. So we're just gonna have to bring some dirt in here and uh, get this filled in. And uh, it didn't even lift the posts out or anything. So all in all, this really could not have gone any better than it did, other than the fact that it's freezing out here right now and I wanna go back inside. So I'm really glad that excavator fired up right now because it did not want to. Those batteries were cold, cold, cold. So was that engine. So we're gonna go ahead and let it run for a little bit, make her happy, and then we'll shut it back off. But this is the part of ranching that is uh, not fun. It's stuff like this. Oh look, the cows think it's fun. Yeah, you guys excited? <laughs> All right, well I'll be back at this another day, probably not tomorrow, since tomorrow's Easter. Yeah, I'm thinking, thinking Monday or Tuesday we'll get at this. Let's go. 
Looks like we found the problem right here. All right, so I'm not gonna deny it, but a lot of our fencing is pretty measly, it's pretty shabby, and uh, this back fence right here is no exception. And the day that we were fixing the fence on that side, where the cows were getting into my neighbor's property, we had our bull get out. Now he's supposed to be on this side of the fence, and he made his way over to this side of the fence. Now you can tell that this is all pretty rinky-dink right here. This is how it was when we bought the place, and it has old panels that are tied to existing posts. And you guys can see that this is pretty shaky. All of this is just in desperate need of repair. And I'm guessing that our bull decided to jump over right here and start chasing some of the heifers that were in heat. So needless to say, he got put in timeout. He is now in the bull pen because he's trying to breed our heifers, which are technically not supposed to be bred yet. So we got to keep him isolated for the time being. He's been pretty well behaved for a long time, but he came and wrecked some havoc over here. So we're gonna have to deal with that later. But let me go ahead and show you guys the part of the fence that we did repair. All right, so this little section of fence right here is what needed repair. And this is a pretty problematic little area. It's kind of a temperamental spot because when we get a ton of rain, this just turns into like a huge river and you can't go down too low because whatever debris is coming down through here, it'll just destroy this. So it's kind of hard to find the sweet spot. You guys can see that we added a new section of barbed wire down here. This was the last one, and this used to be about the same height as this one. So with each storm, this little riverbank goes down and down and down. So the gap just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And normally that's okay, but you guys can see that this old rusty barbed wire right here, it actually broke in two. So we kind of mended it together with another piece of barbed wire, and then reinforced it with this. And hopefully that resolves all of our issues for the time being with our cows getting onto my neighbor's property. You guys, I love it back here. This is just such a beautiful area. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and make our way back. Hopefully we don't hit any of the poison oak that's around here. Hey, you know the gate over by Charlie? Yeah. Can you go open that up for me? Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, well, as you guys can tell, we got the massive oak tree that finally met its fate. You guys can see this root ball right here is just absolutely trashed. Everything was like decomposing, starting to fall apart. I honestly don't know how the tree hadn't fallen over already. But So right now this thing's in our big cow pen, which is kind of problematic. And we are gonna try and get this thing cleared out of here today. You guys can tell that we got the big excavator right here. We got the 299 with the grapple bucket. We did bring the chainsaw over just in case we need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a quick little backstory. In this area that we live, there are just a ton of these big, beautiful oak trees but about 10 or maybe 15 years ago, somebody was bringing in just loads and loads of oak firewood from out of state. And they brought in with them this little bug. It's called the golden oak borer or something like that. It's just a horrific little bug that is just wreaking havoc on these oak trees. And on the other side of this fence line, which is where our cattle go out to graze every day, there are just a ton of oak trees. And it is so sad to see how many have fallen and how many have died. So it is a really sad story. And as a result of it, we got stuff like this happening. A couple years back, we had another big massive oak tree right there that the bugs did their thing with it, and it ended up getting pushed over too. So as sad as this is, we're gonna try and find somewhat of a silver lining to this scenario, and that is that we have a big pile of dirt right on the other side of Charlie that occasionally we like to throw rocks at. So I think I've kind of somewhat come up with a plan. We're gonna take the 299, we're gonna track it through there because the big excavator will not fit through that little door over there. And we're just gonna start breaking off piece by piece if we can. I don't know if the 299 with the grapple bucket will be able to. And then if the 299 is not able to do that, we will track the excavator over to probably right here. I will reach over, I'll grab it, we'll probably pick up the tree set it down right here. And then from there, we'll probably break out the chainsaw and start cutting the tree up. But let's see how this goes. I'm gonna jump in the 299 first and give that a good honest effort and we'll see what we can get done. <laughs> I'm a flippery snake. <laughs> gonna give you guys a quick little look before we just start tearing things apart real quick. You guys can see like how bad a shape this woods and you guys can see that that branch is just like completely broken through. It's like starting to decompose already. That one's super broken. Like this tree is just ready to fall at any given time. There's a couple branches that are help holding it up like this one right there. So this has been a long time coming and uh, as sad as I am to do this, we gotta get her done. You ready to get to work, cowboy? Yep. All right. So it got me thinking, I am super grateful for my tractor because imagine if this had happened like 200 years ago and uh, these were the only tools we had. Can you guys imagine how long this thing would take? Do you think you could do it? Think you could do it with this ax? 
I could not shot that whole thing. You don't think so? <laughs> As Tractor Boy has shown us, it would take quite some time to get this thing chopped up. But, you think you're ready? Can you film for me? Yep. All right, let's go. This is going to be way easier not using the axes. I'm going to go start opening the gates, okay? Thank you. <laughs> That's as much as it will do. Get this away. We don't need that. Can we use the axe? That would take us like one whole year. Make sure you don't go under the tree while I'm working on it, okay? Okay! I'll tell you where to salt. Let's close this gate. Looks like get to close. Oh, he's only doing it. But this would be an awesome video. This might hit a hundred fifty subscribers. Oh, that is such terror! Oh, I'm hungry. This is crazy. I was just getting ready to rip off one of the branches and I realized that you guys can see the main crack that forced us to actually push this thing over. The one that had us like super worried and it basically just runs up right the middle of the trunk. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that. All right, so we got that crack running along the tree right there and then that's the one right there that really got things going. That was like a brand new fresh crack. So those are the two cracks that forced my hand to fire up the big excavator, track it down here and push this thing over. And I was super worried doing it that I was just gonna destroy the fence, that it was gonna break, go some other direction. But luckily everything went well. So it might not look like it, but we're making a pretty good dent. I'm gonna go ahead and try and grab this big branch right here and take it all as one piece. Nest. I'm my first kill. 
Yeah, I think there was a nest. Uh, I can't tell what's in there. There was nest. one spot where I broke it off so and like water came out. Like a lot of water. <laughs> oh well. Well. You failed. I can roll I mean I can't roll it, but if it goes.
piece of wood was extremely deceiving. There's no way in the world that I thought that little piece of, well, not little, but that I thought that tree trunk would be able to pick the back end of this machine. All right, so we're getting pretty close to where we want to be. You guys can see that this is significantly taller than it used to be. And for size reference, I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but I think it's like just a hair taller than I am. But I would like to go up at least another foot, and I think we have enough stuff in this pasture still that needs cleaning up that I think we'll be able to achieve that. We still have a large portion of that one tree that fell down over there. There's a couple branches underneath that tree. We had another tree fall over here. You guys can see kind of the remnants of it. And then we have another big pile back by that tree. So I'm gonna spend the next hour or so cleaning all that up. And then once we have everything cleaned up, I'll go ahead and truck some dirt down here so that we can have just this big, beautiful little mound of dirt with nice luscious green grass that grows on it. Kind of like it does over here. We would like to replicate all of that over here and then just have a nice big clean pasture that we can turn the animals out in so they can have lots of food. Anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and get to work. Gonna go ahead and move this out of the way. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know why this would be over here. It's a strange looking contraption. Go ahead and get the 299 warming up again. Uh-oh. All right, well, let's go ahead and get this thing set up on top. Hopefully we don't tip over right now. Up. All right, so I ended up being just like a bunch of the same thing back and forth, back and forth, but it turned out pretty good. But I had to run over and call the cows in real quick. It's feeding time. We're gonna give them a couple treats real quick. And then after we get them in for the night, and then I'll run back over and I'll show you guys the mound. It's getting pretty big. I'm pretty excited for it. So as soon as these cows get in, we'll go ahead and start running around. Come on, kids. All right, well, as usual, it ends up being way more work than I initially planned on. And I know it's not gonna show up very well on camera, but this is just a monstrous pile of stuff. There is dirt mixed in with it, and I'm gonna have to bring a decent amount of dirt down to go ahead and actually cover this all up because I want it to look nice. I want it to be somewhat aesthetically pleasing and not just this big, ugly pile of wood. But for the most part, all the hard work is done. And as cool as this big mound is gonna be, it's still kind of sad, kind of like brings me down a little bit because it used to be three big, beautiful oak trees. And in combination with that golden oak boar beetle, whatever it's called, then we had just a couple really, really dry years. With those two things together, it's really hard for the oak trees to stand a chance. And this is a result of what happened. So before I start rambling on too much, we're gonna go ahead and throw the drone up in the sky and we're gonna send it that way. So you guys can kind of see the aftermath of what these beetles have actually done. Now we've had I think three, maybe four in total that we've lost on our property. But on that piece back there, there are just tons and tons of them that have met the same fate as these oak trees. And it's just one of those things that kind of sucks, but it's happened and we're having to deal with it. So there's a lot of cleanup going on. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the drone up in the sky and you guys will get to see some of the beauty back here and also some of the devastation. I would say that I hope you guys enjoy it, but it's kind of sad. But anyways, let's go ahead and throw the drone up.
All right, well, I'm gonna go and put the screws this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you could do me a huge solid like, subscribe, share this video with your amigos, hit that notification button down below so you guys can see progress on whatever else we're working on, and I will see you guys next time. Later.